introduce Dr. Mary Stavropoulou. Um, Mary is a medical doctor accredited by the Skin Cancer College of Australasia. Again, like John, she has a very long CV, um, including over 15 years experience in the prevention, early detection and treatment of skin cancer. Mary. Thank you, Christine. Good evening, everyone. Tonight I'll be discussing skin cancer detection and demoscopy. The information presented is of a general nature and does not constitute personalised medical advice. If you have any lesion of concern or want to be screened for skin cancer, please consult a suitably trained and qualified medical practitioner. I would like to acknowledge the following demoscopy slides, number 13 and 29, are courtesy of Dermoscopedia at demoscopedia.org, and all other demoscopy slides are courtesy of Dermnet New Zealand at dermnetnz.org. Some compelling statistics, two in three Australians will be diagnosed with skin cancer by the age of 70 and 80% of all new skin cancers, sorry, 80% of all new cancers are skin cancers. While many skin cancers are picked up by people themselves and their loved ones, research has shown that examination by a doctor trained in dermoscopy, the specialised field of skin examination for skin cancer detection, results in early detection of skin cancers, including melanomas, and therefore, earlier treatment and a greater chance of cure. Demoscopy is the medical examination of the skin for the detection of skin cancers and other skin lesions using a dermatoscope, which is a handheld device with suitable light and magnification to look into the skin so that a skin spots in-depth features such as colours and structures not usually visible to the naked eye with or without magnification can be e clearly seen and used to diagnose skin cancer or other skin conditions. Research has shown that compared to skin examination with a naked eye, demoscopy improves sensitivity, that is the accuracy of correctly diagnosing skin cancers. Therefore, it can be life-saving as cancers are detected earlier and also improves specificity, that is the accuracy of correctly diagnosing non-cancerous skin spots so that fewer skin spots need to be surgically removed and the patient can be reassured. In the case of skin spots of borderline appearance, dermoscopic, that is, in-depth photography, enables us to monitor the skin spots and remove them if they change. The research shows that improved skin cancer detection is most likely when the doctors had the appropriate training and experience in dermoscopy, so it is important that skin and skin spot checks are carried out by doctors trained and experienced in dermoscopy. The commonest skin cancers diagnosed using demoscopy are melanoma and the non-melanoma skin cancers, also known as keratinocyte carcinomas, which are BCC and SCC. With SCC, it, it also includes the earliest form of it, Bowen's disease, and keratoconthoma, an SCC variant. Dermoscopic features that assist in the diagnosis of skin cancer include asymmetry, various colours, structures and patterns, and diagnosis involves pattern recognition and pattern analysis using various diagnostic algorithms to diagnose whether a skin spot is harmless or cancerous. Those who benefit from a dermoscopic skin examination include anyone concerned about a, a particular spot or spots, or anyone who wants a total body check for skin cancer screening. No one, not even children, babies or newborns even, are too young to be checked if there is a concern. For someone who wants only particular spots checked, it usually concerns a new or changed spot. And you can refer to the skin self-examination guidelines on SunSmart website for a guide to checking your skin. They have a, an acronym ABCDEFG, where ABCD corresponds to asymmetry, irregular border, irregular or different colour and different looking lesion or diameter more than six millimetres. EFG involves an evolving firm growing lump. But obviously any new or changed skin spot and anything that skin spot that's sore, itchy, bleeding, ulcerating, scabbing or crusting is of interest, especially a new raised skin spot or a flat spot that's become raised. And a word of caution on mole apps. Research indicates no current app is accurate in diagnosis and the photographs used are plain and not in-depth dermoscopic photos. However, checking only skin spots of concern is not ideal as there may be skin cancers unknown to the patient on their body or outside 
their line of vision. Because of this, a total body dermoscopic skin examination is preferred. This is especially the case if there is a past history or family history of skin cancer, a lot of sun exposure, peeling or blistering sunburn, solariums, or even many puva treatments. If the person has many moles, for example, especially regular looking ones, if they have light coloured skin, hair or eyes, all those skin cancer can affect any skin type. It is also important in cases of immunosuppression, for example, due to organ, tra organ transplantation, bone marrow or blood cancers, immunosuppressant medications or chemotherapy, HIV, etc. Like other medical examinations, dermoscopy is not 100% accurate and is best used in conjunction with information from the medical history as well as the history of the individual skin spots and the examination of the whole skin surface with monitoring of any skin spots of borderline appearance. At NIM, the surface involves a detailed general medical and skin history and a full skin examination, which is what I provide when someone comes along. In a screen private area, the patient puts on a clean gown, keeping underwear, jewellery and bra on underneath. I perform a thorough total body skin examination with dermatoscopy, including of the nails, behind the ears, the scalp, eyes, nose, mouth, soles and between the toes, etc. At NIM, we use the Heine Cube system by Heine, the manufacturer of the world's first integrated handheld dermatoscope in 1989, to take and store in-depth dermoscopic digital photos to document and monitor skin spots. If on history or examination a skin spot has features suspicious of skin cancer, it is advised that it is removed and sent to the pathology laboratory examined by a dermatopathologist, a doctor trained in the diagnosis of skin conditions by examining the skin tissue samples underneath the microscope with the aid of special stains. If the skin spot is borderline in appearance but not sufficiently suspicious for skin cancer to require a biopsy, a dermoscopic digital photograph can be taken to monitor it. The photo is stored so it can be compared with a repeat dermoscopic photograph at a suitable time afterwards, for example, three months. If there is found to be suspicious or significant change, it is then advised the lesion be removed to, as well and sent to the lab. A personalised risk assessment is made and skin cancer prevention detection advice and handout are provided. There are some practical tips on preparing for a skin check. So it's good to make inquiries so you have your history ready about any concerning spot, ask contacts or bring old photographs of yourself with uh, the spot in the photograph, even if it's at a distance. Have details of your past history or family history of skin cancer. Bring the medical history or photos from any previous medical skin check visit. It's also good to examine yourself before you visit so you know what's new or changed. Again, refer to the SunSmart website to know what to check for and use your eyes to see and your hands to feel your skin. In terms of the physical preparation, if possible, treat any skin conditions like eczema or psoriasis in advance. Moisturise your skin for a couple of weeks beforehand. Avoid tanning if possible. Avoid fake tan or laser treatments which might change the skin's pigment for at least a couple of weeks beforehand. And avoid having makeup or nail polish on. It's asked, how often should a dermoscopy skin check be performed? I recommend usually yearly, unless the patient is in a high-risk group. Of course, with children, it's, it's usually not necessary for that to be the case. It is important, if you are having skin checks, to examine yourself every one to three months between doctor checks and notify a suitably trained medical practitioner if there are any changes or concerns. Now lastly, I would like to show you some dermoscopic images of a variety of skin lesions. So I just wanted to show a few benign or harmless skin lesions. First one is a wart. Uh, this is an oil gland overgrowth. This is a dermatofibroma or a harmless scar lump. These are very, these are very common but have varying appearances. They're um, called separate keratosis, also known as senile warts, even though they're not <laughs> associated with senility per se and they're not warts. Um, now these are various sunspots. This is a freckle. This is a solid and tiger from su excessive sun exposure, but it's, uh, it's harmless. 
can turn into a seborrheic keratosis. This is a lentigo simplex, uh, which can occur from birth or childhood and turn into a mole. And this is an ink spot lentigo, which uh, is associated with sunburn. Now, this is a very common uh, solar keratosis or actinic keratosis, which is precancerous skin lesion found on sun damaged skin. And this is one on the face. This is uh, the very earliest form of SCC, which can arise from a solar keratosis. And this is a more invasive form of an SCC. This is uh, an SEC variant called a keratoconthoma. That slide is from Dermoscopedia. And another skin cancer, uh, BCC. This is a pigmented form. This is a nodular or raised form of it. Now some normal types of moles. And they're named according to whereabouts they are in the different levels of the skin. It's a blue type of mole. This is one of the uh, forms a mole can take when uh, it's from birth. Uh, this is uh, an irregular mole. Here's another one that's irregular. And this is an early, uh, not yet invasive melanoma, usually on the, or type of melanoma on the head and neck, on sun damaged skin. Lentigo maligna, which can invade deeper into the skin and be called an lentigo maligna melanoma. And some uh, forms of melanoma, just a, a sort of garden variety one, if you like, um, with quite a bit of um, depigmentation. And this is a raised melanoma. These are the more uh, dangerous ones because they they go deeper quickly and this is another form of melanoma that's quite uh, difficult to diagnose because it doesn't have pigment it's called a, an amelanotic melanoma this is a uh, acral melanoma or melanoma that can be found on the soles of the feet or the palms <coughs> and this is a melanoma that uh, is of the male unit. That too is a slide from Dermoscopedia. So I'd like to thank you all for listening to this topic and I hope it's of help to you. Thank you.